All right, good morning, Otterbein. So glad to see all of you here this uh, first official week of Advent, and um, I'm so excited to just be worshiping with you. If you didn't grab an ornament on your way in, make sure to make your way over at some point during the first part of the service and grab one of those from those uh, little tray tables coming in. Uh, we're going to be, you guys are all going to be helping us decorate our tree a little bit later, so we wanted to make sure that you're prepped and ready for that, but so excited to have you all here for worship. We are going to get started with a couple announcements this morning. So a bunch of them slash all of these are listed in your bulletin. So if you need any more information about them, please feel free to pick up one of those. Um, but first off, we're going to start off with an announcement from Pastor Steve about our common gathering, our new common gathering space down there. What we wanted to do is take the opportunity to consolidate all those efforts so that we could offer even more to everyone in our church. So if you come down to our coffee center, we have regular coffee, decaf coffee. We always have some sort of special blend for the particular time of year. We've also expanded what we're able to offer for our children. So we have water and juice and hot chocolate for our kids available here, as well as uh, an even expanded number of snacks to help make sure that you can stay awake during the sermon on Sunday mornings. And so we want to offer this to all the people in our churches, all of our services to come to one central place so that we can offer the best hospitality experience possible. So whether you're in our contemporary services and our traditional services, we want to invite you to just take time to come down and get what you need for hospitality on a Sunday morning. Thank you so much for being part of Otter Vine Church. Good morning, everyone. I want to take time today just to Awesome. Speak. So anyway, we just want to make that announcement. Obviously, we just want to at least have some sort of common gathering space where we can, you know, get together and fellowship in some sort of way. Um, I know we'll still probably have some things available down here, but that's your main space to be able to go and grab some coffee and snacks before the service and um, hopefully fellowship with some of the folks from other services and come together as one a little bit, too. So... That's a little bit about that. Um, some more announcements. We have the Sight and Sound trip. Again, I know we've been talking about this for months, and it's finally coming up this week on December 7th, um, and they're leaving promptly at 10.15. So sorry if you missed out on that, but I know a lot of folks are excited for that trip, so make sure you're here and ready to head out at 10.15 for that um, awesome day um, of food and um, the theater experience. I know it's going to be amazing. So we have that. Um, Barnabas Notes. Tom Welshins uh, is coming up for the Barnabas Notes, and there are cards in, um, available at, in the office, and Nancy has um, some available too if you have some that you'd like to participate um, in that program. Uh, and uh, we have a lot of announcements for the Christmas season coming up. So we've got a Christmas family event that you'll be able to check out in your bulletin. Um, that's coming up on December 9th from 11 to 2 p.m. Uh, and so on Saturday, December 9th, they're hosting, uh, we are hosting an annual community Christmas for the family event. Um, and so we encourage you guys to come dress in your favorite Christmas garb, your ugly Christmas sweaters or Christmas PJs or whatever you want. Um, and we're going to have all kinds of things with food um, and events to be able, and, and Santa and Mrs. Claus are also going to be there. So it'll be great for the family and bring the little ones along as well. And then we also have our Christmas caroling event coming up, which is the next day on December 10th. Um, if you've never been a part of that, we just get a group of us together, walk around, spread some Christmas cheer uh, around the community. Um, I've got some quotes here from some members who got some received from Christmas caroling last year. One's from James and Janet Tyson, who said, What a nice surprise last year when we heard a most glorious sound outside. It was some members, friends, of Otterbein Church singing Christmas carols. The atmosphere was joyful. It made the message of the season perfect. Our deck has even more room for carolers this year. So they're getting ready for more people to come around and carol. And another one is from Skip and Hilda who said, we were delighted the Otterbein carol carolers stopped at our home before Christmas. It was a wonderful way to lift our spirits for the holiday and connect with the church in a seasonal way since we were unable to attend the church services. Um, hope to see you this Christmas. So. A lot of folks you, you can see, obviously, who like to see us just outside of the walls of this church, um, as well as some folks who might not be able to come in as often get to experience that piece of community that we offer outside of these walls. So feel free to come and participate that with, in that. We'd love to have you uh, on December 10th for that. 
Um, and then the last thing, we have Toys for Tots coming up, so make sure to fill up the boxes under the trees in the narthex um, and in the gathering. Um, we'll have, we need to have them filled up by December 10th, that caroling day, um, to be able to go and serve that piece of our missions. I know there were a lot of announcements. Are there any that I missed out on or any others that people wanted to highlight this morning before we get started with worship? All right. Sounds good. Well, like I said, we are moving into the Advent season here, so you're probably going to start hearing some more Christmas tunes and things. Um, we're going to get started by, um, with one, just inviting the Lord to um, come into the space and, and be present in this season and make us more aware um, of his presence during the season as well. So if you'll stand, we're going to get started with some worship.
watch a video about the lighting of the Hope Candle on my first Sunday at Advent. In the first week of Advent, we light the candle of hope, or the prophecy candle. From Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 and 6. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Breaking through the silence with glory in the highest, the hope of all creation resting in his mother's arms. The song on the horizon ringing through the heavens, the long awaited Savior. Come to set the captives free. Come to set the captives free. Come to set us free. And hope has a name. Amen. 
Amen. You guys can take a seat. This time we're going to go into our joys and concerns. I don't have any specifics about um, names of folks, but I do know I'm trying to pull out. There's a pink little slip back here in your bulletins if you didn't grab one. If you need one, feel free to ask someone else and they can grab you one. But there's this list of folks um, that we're to be praying for um, this morning and throughout our weeks and throughout this holiday season. So pick up one of these, pin it to your fridge, stick it on your work desk, whatever you, you know, want to do. And take some breaks throughout the day or at the beginning of the day or whenever you get the chance. And just send up prayers for these folks, um, especially during the holiday season. I know it's hard, um, particularly for, for us and for any loved ones going through a hard time in this season. It's just... We want everyone to be around and be healthy and, and be with each other. And um, during these special times of year, and it, it's always tougher when um, we're having some difficulty with that. So send up some prayers for those folks. Um, are there any other concerns in particular that, that people wanted to lift up or people um, or situations that folks wanted to lift up this morning and share with us? Well, that's good. I know just in general, like I said, during this holiday season, um, a lot of travel is happening and a lot of folks coming from all over the place. And especially in it's interesting that during this holiday season is often also when we have the worst type of weather for traveling. So just prayers for folks that they would stay um, safe in their travels and flying and especially driving with ice on the roads and things like that. Um, just so everyone gets to where they need to um, safely. Any others that come to mind at all? Seems like we're having a good morning, good week. Um, and like I always say, too, I know that there are things that folks necessarily aren't comfortable lifting up um, in, in public and even in this small community that we have, and but mighty back here in the gathering. It can be tough to share things out loud, um, at least with folks that maybe you don't only see on a weekly basis. But just know that we're praying for you um, and that, you know, the Lord intervenes for you as well, even if it's things that you don't feel comfortable saying out loud. Um, just know that we are constantly interceding on, on your behalf and, and sending up prayers for you. And if there is anything that we can do to support you or your family during this holiday season, I know that there are almost every person in, in this room would step up um, in whatever way that they could. So don't hesitate to reach out to somebody or even just share, you know, a prayer concern anonymously with our church. Um, you can feel free to do that um, in our office. Just drop off a note or, um, you know, anything like that. And we'll be happy to add whoever it is to our prayer list or whatever situation it might be. Um, we're praying for you guys throughout this holiday season. Any joys that we can lift up this morning? Rayanne. Wow. Yeah. Kim's like, <laughs> Kim's like, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's a round of applause. She's like, don't brag on me, but if, if you're going to, get it right. <laughs> Congratulations to, uh, to Bright Beginnings and, and to you, Kim. I know you run a tight ship over there, and it's just um, exciting to see all of your guys' hard work to come together. Um, and I know a lot of those families look forward to seeing their kiddos and, and things like that, too. So props for you for putting that all together and, and your staff there, too. So thankful to have you guys um, as part of the church. Any other joys this morning? quiet crew this morning. That's okay. We're celebrating with you too, even if it's stuff that you don't want to share. So um, yeah, we just lo I love to take this time in, in community and just be um, not even necessarily share these things together. It's great when we get to talk with each other about this, but just to recognize the atmosphere and the community that we have back here and the ability to be close with one another and draw alongside of each other, uh, lift each other up and also just do what the Lord called us to do, to be in community, um, to share everything with one another and to mourn with those who mourn and to celebrate with those who are celebrating and everything in between. Uh, obviously, all of us know life can be an interesting beast and throw out tons of things at us. And sometimes it feels like we should be celebrating but can't um, and vice versa. And just know that this community is, is here for you and, and wants to support you and walk alongside you in whatever stage of life or grief or celebration it, it might be. We just want to be with you and, and lift you up. So, um, like I said, if you have any concerns, joys, or concerns going forward, feel free to just reach out to one of us or reach out to somebody in this room individually, um, you know, who you trust and I know would love to lift you up in prayer and, and walk alongside you in whatever way possible. So we've got one more song before we move into um, our prayer time. Um, and this is one that we did last week, um, but I always love, I do this one a lot during um, the holiday season just because 
it's a great depiction of the story of, of Jesus and, and his whole life and what the Lord did for us um, in sacrificing his son, and, but sending, first of all, that gift of hope to us um, on earth and, and humbling himself as a child and sending his son to live the life that we live so that we can know um, how to emulate the values of, of the Lord that we serve. And so um, just reflect on, on this song and think about what the Lord has done for you and, and what that means here. Uh, in this holiday season in particular. shepherd we thank you for all that you are and all that you've done for us lord 
I pray during this season of Christmas and Advent that the reality of who you are and your kingdom and this gospel truth would hold very deeply in our hearts if it has not already and that you would freshen that, that you would light um, that lamp, um, that you would keep us burning and, and yearning for all of who you are, Lord. It's easy to become distracted by the stressors of getting gifts for people, of, of work struggles, of um, continuing on in school, and it can be hard to see that hope um, and the joy that you have in this season. So I pray that even now we would pause and be still before you, Lord, that you would bring your peace that surpasses understanding, God, that you would give rest to our souls if anyone is feeling weary today, um, that you would bring your comfort and your strength. Um, we thank you, God, just for being with us and your faithfulness in every single season of life. And we lift up all of our joys and concerns before you. Please be with everyone that is on our prayer list, God, that you would intervene in the way that only you can, that you would provide when things feel hopeless or um, doubtful, and that you would heal anyone that is dealing with sickness or um, any sort of brokenness, God. Uh, we lift up especially those that are walking through the season dealing with grief, um, the loss of a loved one or a friend, it can be really difficult in the holidays when we're supposed to feel joyful and excited, um, but also missing those that we have loved over the years. I pray your extra um, ounce of comfort and, and love to wrap your arms around those people that are, are missing family and friends. And um, We also lift up our joys, Lord. Uh, we thank you for our wonderful daycare here and um, for them ushering us into the Christmas season with all of our wonderful kids and children in this church, Lord, um, and our teenagers as well. We thank you, God, for their light in their life, their lives, and um, just that we can come together and have fun and fellowship during this season. We thank you for that wonderful opportunity. And we also just thank you for everything that's going on in this church. We thank you for um, events that we can come together and be in community, that we can carol and share your good news and your peace and joy and love um, to our neighbors this season, but also um, very practically in missions and providing toys for families that might not be able to purchase them or hats and scarves or a coat or um, to lend a meal to someone in this season. Thank you that we can be your hands and feet and continue to serve the people around us and hopefully um, in all of this world, Lord, too, may you allow us to make an impact for you and your gospel truth again. Um, we love you, God, and uh, we honor you at this time. I pray that even as we continue to um, put our ornaments on the tree, Lord, that we would be reminded of um, all of the things that you have brought us, Lord, for, for worship and prayer in your scripture and uh, the light of this season in your son, Jesus, who stepped down into earth um, to be like us in human form, um, but was without sin and continued to bring grace and forgiveness and love and compassion toward your people. Um, we thank you, God, that you rewrote history and you allowed us to become, um, you know, your children and that we're able to step into your holy of holies, Lord. Um, please continue to have mercy on us, though, and, and forgive us of our sins and Help us to confess that with you in the secret place, but also maybe with another person. So we may be held accountable to things that we would continue to walk in your greatness, Lord, as your Holy Spirit um, continues to shape and mold us. So I pray today that we would be listening to you and, um, you know, be surrendering to your will for our lives, God. Uh, we love you so much. Please be with us in this holiday season. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite Pastor Steve up. Amen, everyone. It's wonderful to be with you and to come together and celebrate today. We get to celebrate the beginning of Advent. Now you've already celebrated and lit your candle down here as we take this journey of hope. And before we enter into our time of celebration, continue to go behind me. <laughs> As we enter into our time of celebration, I want to make you aware, you might have noted when you came in that there's a thermometer in the back, and there's an insert in your, um, if you want to pick it on the way out, or if you got on the way in, a letter from our lay leader and myself about a project that the church is undertaking to upgrade in our sanctuary, our audio, in our, 
visual components there. And so we encourage you to see what that is, um, to see the amount that we're trying to raise and to see if that's part of your journey, if you have the capability to help support us in that effort. Uh, one of the wonderful things that's going to do uh, for the people, particularly the gathering service, is that's going to allow us also in the future, it's going to enhance our ability to do effective more contemporary band worship in that space when it's needed in the future. It's going to allow us to do that more effectively and to show things on the screen as well in there. So we encourage you. Uh, we're excited about that opportunity. And so if you want to be part of that journey, uh, that's what we're doing. So today it's about celebration. It's about beginning a journey. And so as we come to decorate our tree, did everyone get a Christmas on the way in? Everyone has something shiny, something decorative looking? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to decorate together today. We're going to decorate not just because it looks pretty, but we're going to remember the meaning of these decorations. So I'm going to ask certain decorations to come up at certain times and decorate. Now, hopefully it's clear what you have. If you are looking at the Christmas you have and you say, I have no idea what in the heck this thing is, just come at some random time, okay? It's not a sin, no one's going to know, okay? And if you don't know, we are going to have a time at the end for the Island of Misfit Toys, okay? If you have a Christmas that you don't know what it is, it doesn't fit a category, that's your time, okay? So I'm going to stand up here and I'm going to speak about the significance of these symbols, as we celebrate this season. Now, I will also tell you, we have a beautiful tree. It's very tall. Don't attack it, okay? Don't knock it over, all right? Looking at you, okay? As we celebrate today, so please treat with loving, gentle, kindness, and caring. And we will disperse your ornaments up later, okay? So don't worry about the upper disbursement. Okay, we'll do that. It's the significance of being together, of decorating, of remembering why we do what we do. And so, again, I will ask you to come up as we go through the various Christmas, again, remembering why we come together and why we celebrate. And so I'm going to begin with, if you have a triangle or an alpha or an omega symbol, okay, if you have a triangle, an alpha, or an omega symbol, if you have one of those, come on up. You get to start us out. Beautiful. I'm always waiting to see if anyone stands. My friends, we're reminded by these symbols of who God is. Of Sure, yes. That is it. You are on. You are on point, sir. We're reminded of who God is. The triangle reminds us that we serve God three in one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Alpha and Omega reminds us that Jesus who was born is the God who has always been and will always be. And that's who we worship in this season. I'll ask you now if you have a Bible or an angel. Would you come forth and hang them, either a Bible or an angel? <laughs> our scripture and our angel remind us of the importance of the story, of the story of what Jesus has done. The story that the angels sang and yelled to the shepherds in the field. Salvation has come to the world. Peace, hope, love, and joy. Just for curiosity's sake, at home, how many of you have angels on the top of your tree? Are you angel people? We are angel people. Oh, all right, you go. I'm going to wait for you. Oh, that's beautiful. Well done, sir. Awesome. We also celebrate. How many of you are star people at the trees? All right. Now, 
How many of you actually have stars to hang? This is your time, too. Okay. This is not as bad. In the first service, we figured out we have more stars than anything because half the church came up when we did stars. All right, Kim. You are different, so there you go. Our star reminds us of the star that shone over Bethlehem, that guided those who were searching for Christ to where he was born. And we remember that this is a season of journeying. This is a season of journeying right, right here, like this. Oh, you get a, uh, that's a wonky one. Oh, man. This is, this is awesome. All right, there we go. Good job. All right. All right. <laughs> We're reminded that we never know how life's going to go, right? We don't know each and every day, but we do know where we're headed. We do know we're journeying towards Christ, towards salvation. The star guides us. It's a season of remembering where, <laughs> where our focus is. <sighs> remembering where, I know, anything else. Remembering where our focus is and where we're guided by the stars. Now, if you have any kind of Christmas ball, so any kind of sphere, any size, any shape, go ahead and bring them up now. That's you, Philip. All right. <laughs> yeah, I, I butter something. I know. Oh. There you go. He's got it. Yeah. Well done, sir. Oh, you're good. Hmm? Need help. All right. <laughs> oh, we got more. You did it. Good job. <laughs> I know when I was young, probably many of you, we sang a song in church that reminds us he's got the whole world what? In his hands. These spheres remind us that Jesus came to save the entire world. Each and every person, whether they love him, whether they hate him, Jesus came for our whole world, and he has truly the whole world in his hands, for he is Lord of all, and we celebrate that today. Next, if you have either a dove or a rose, so a bird or a flower of some kind, come up and hang it on the tree now. Yeah, you can hang the guitar up now. It's okay. You can hang that up now. Why not? How about that? You want to go right there? You want to do it? You hang it up. Oh, you hang it up next time. Sounds good. All right. Oh, you're good. No. Oh. Just set it in there. Yeah. Just set it. There you go. Beautiful. The doves that we hung remind us of peace, 
symbol of peace, that when Jesus was born, he was the Prince of Peace and continues to be the Prince of Peace in our world, and we certainly need that in our world today. The rose reminds us of life, of color, of beauty, even in the midst of winter. Jesus was the rose that bloomed and blooms forevermore. All right, if you have a butterfly, come hang up your butterflies. And if you have a cross, come hang it up as well. Two crosses. She has one for you. Mommy has one for you. Mm-hmm. I'll put it right there. Can I do that for you? How's that? Look good? All right. Our crosses and our butterflies go hand in hand. The cross reminds us that even as we celebrate the birth of Christ, Christ came and walked among us on a journey that led to a cross. We're reminded of his sacrifice for us, that he died for our sins. But the butterfly is a reminder of rebirth. That Christ was in the tomb, just as a butterfly is in a cocoon, and then comes out. So as we celebrate the chrysalis, as we celebrate that rebirth that Christ gives to us to be reborn, we celebrate through the butterfly. Now if you have a fish, a cornerstone, or a musical instrument, this is your time. Fish, cornerstone, musical instrument. We're going to do three at the same time. Yep, you can go right in here. Uh, right here. Whoop, whoop. I gotcha. Okay. <laughs> All of these symbols are symbols of our faith, of our church, of who we are as people of faith. The fish was a symbol used by the early church to signal one to one another, but also a reminder that just as Jesus provided for the 5,000, he provides for his people, for his church. The cornerstone reminds us that we are built upon Christ Jesus. The musical instruments remind us of our call to praise the Lord. That's who we are as a church, called to praise God. That we are built upon Jesus and that Jesus will provide for us. Now, if you have a Chris mine and I haven't called it out yet, this is your time. All right? Every Chris mine should come up now. All right? I don't know, but that's the significance. I'm going to get to it. I think it might be a snowflake. It could be a spider web. But as I said earlier, the island of misfit toys, we're reminded that Jesus came to us in our imperfection, that Jesus meets us where we are, to take us on a journey where, God, where Jesus is leading us to. So no matter where we are, no matter if we're imperfect and don't fit into the perfect category, Jesus came for each and every one of us. 
And we're reminded in this Christmas season that Jesus came for you. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter where you are now, Jesus meets you where you are in your imperfection and helps lead us on to perfection. So as we celebrate together, as we celebrate what God is doing, I'm going to invite you to bow your heads and let's be in prayer. Gracious God, I just thank you for our celebration. I thank you for the reasons you give us to worship, to celebrate, to lift your name. Lord, as we decorate this tree, let us remember why we celebrate. And that it is you and your grace and your mercy. Lord, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And before we move, I'm going to invite my, chil our ch my children, our children, to come up and celebrate with me up here. So why don't you join me? Okay. Now, hey. Now we just decorated. Do you guys decorate at home? What is your favorite decoration at home? What's your favorite decoration? The Santa candle. It comes out of the chimney. Oh, you open it up and you light a candle for Santa. That's pretty cool. I've never heard of that. That's awesome. All right, how about you guys? Go ahead. Your Christmas tree. All right, so like what we just did, right? Awesome. Anyone else? What's your guys? Go ahead. Cookies. cookies. All right. I guess you decorate cookies. It's, yeah, you eat them, but okay. What else? What's your favorite decoration? You don't know? All of them. Okay. What about your guys? You have a favorite Christmas decoration? The Mickey Mouse blow up. Okay, the Mickey Mouse inflatable. You like that guy? Oh, and laying out cookies and milk. Yeah, that's a decoration, right? Yo, know, why do we decorate? Why do we do all that stuff? Uh, to honor God. To honor God and to remind us that this is special, right? That's why we decorate. We decorate because things are special, right? Maybe you decorate for birthday parties, other things you decorate for. We decorate for Christmas, just like we just did here, to remind us how special it is, how special this time of year is, right? Okay, so thank you so much for helping us decorate and making this special because you guys are really special, okay? Can I pray with you? Lord, I thank you for my friends. I thank you, Lord, for the hope. We celebrate hope and they give us hope. Lord, that the future is bright and Lord, that you are going to be doing amazing things well into the future of this church, of this community, through the people gathered here. Lord, in your name we pray, amen. All right, guys, I'm going to invite you to take a lollipop and go back to your seats. I'll let you decorate, so you got to listen to me today. All right. And a one, and a two, and a three. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Wait, which one you like? That one, that looks like a good one. There you go. All right. My friends, our scripture for today, as we talk about traditions, rituals, why we do what we do, our scripture actually comes from after Jesus was born for today. Okay, I know that doesn't make much sense, but stick with me here. It comes to us from the chap second chapter of Luke, verses 22 to 40. And so listen to the words of the Lord here. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. 
When the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, The child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Peniel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew. And became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. This is the word of the Lord, and we give thanks for it today. Rituals are an important thing. We have a lot of rituals in our lives, right? We have a lot of things we do. Maybe it's things you do every day, like you get up and you brush your teeth. That's an important ritual, right? Maybe it's things you do once a year. Maybe it's decorating our tree with crispons like we do. We do these rituals over and over and over again. And this story is one of rituals, right? It's a story of Joseph and Mary taking Jesus to the temple to do what they were supposed to do, to have him purified, to consecrate him to the Lord, a ritual. We see Simeon. His ritual is waiting, right? God has told him, you will not die until the Messiah comes. He waits and waits and waits. And then there's Anna. Anna's ritual is praising the Lord. We're told she never leaves the temple. Can you imagine that? If we just set up a little cot for you in the corner here, and you just stayed here all day and all night praising God. If you want to try it, we'll do it, right? The daycare kids might throw balls at you when you're in here, but I can't help that, right? That's her ritual also waiting, but praising God over and over again. We have rituals, and at the heart of all these rituals, and the question we're going to ask today is why? Why do we do these things? Why do we celebrate? What is at the heart and the meaning of the rituals and the traditions that we have? Why did Joseph and Mary take Jesus? Why is Simeon waiting? Why is Anna praising? What is the reason when we talk about rituals and traditions i'm sure you have some of your own right i'm sure you have some in the holiday season and i know that because every time we we are in our small group and i ask people to share their traditions and we went around with 18 people and you know what not one of them shared the same tradition right and i'm sure we could do that today i'm sure i could go through each and every one of you and ask you You'd all be horrified when I ask you, right? What is the tradition that you have that's distinct to your family, right? I'm sure you can think of one. I'm going to share one from our family, okay? We have the tradition of the Christmas bacon, all right? The Christmas bacon is an ornament we have. This is clear because some people in the early service came up to the afterwards and thought I was hanging actual bacon in our Christmas tree. Let me be very clear. It is an ornament of bacon. It was given to me by a church member after I preached a sermon about bacon. Okay? And the significance of the Christmas bacon is that every Christmas day morning, we hang it on the tree Christmas Eve night, and the first kid to find the Christmas bacon gets a special gift. Okay? Maybe you have a pickle. That's a more normal thing. We have a bacon. Okay? And the way that this started is one day the kids were amazed and they saw bacon on the tree. And so we just started hunting for the bacon every year. So that's 
one of our weird traditions. And I'm sure you all have some unique traditions and rituals that you do. And what, why we do them, why these rituals matter first and foremost, is because they are unique. Because they remind us of who we are, right? The Christmas baking is a distinctly Salisbury thing, right? I'm sure you all have rituals that you can think of right now that are distinct to your family. You might not want to share them because of how weird and distinct they are to your family. But they remind you of who you are, right? Our traditions, our rituals remind us of who we are. When Joseph and Mary take Jesus to the temple, it's to be, show him what he is a part of. That he is a part of the nation of Israel. That he's part of God's chosen people. That he's part of this law that has been passed down. When we celebrate the rituals, when we celebrate, when we decorate this tree, when we light the advent wreath, when we put our nativity scene up, the reason that we do it is it reminds us of who we are. That in this season, we are God's people. Jesus' people. We are the church of Jesus Christ. That is who we are. That is why we have a reason to celebrate. That's why this season means more to us than it means to the rest of the world. Because we are the church of Jesus Christ. We know the story. We felt the salvation. We are together and that's what makes us unique that's what makes us distinct because we know what this season we know what this day we know what this celebration is about that's why we celebrate to remember who we are and what makes us special more importantly we are special because of jesus and what jesus has done in our lives we also decorate not just to remind ourselves who we are but we have rituals because we do them every year right you ever have one of those moments when you're watching the news or you're watching some new thing come out and you're just astounded by how much the world is changing right and you have that okay i'm gonna call it my man you know you have that ah oh, it's not like back when i was a kid right one of those moments You'll get them soon. They're coming. All right? You have those moments, right? The world is changed. One of the beautiful things about rituals are that they don't change, right? That we do them each and every year. That's what provides meaning to them, right? That's what makes them significant. And what I have found in my life, and if you've ever taken a journey with children, if you've ever taken a journey with grandchildren, you know the people that are the biggest sticklers for tradition in this entire world are kids. That's what we have found in our journey. I'm sure you've found it too. Most of the traditions in our house that we have were created by our children and we didn't even know they were happening, right? For years, we went to Pizza Hut every single Christmas Eve. Why? Because one Christmas Eve, we went to Pizza Hut. The next year, the kids sing, aren't we going to Pizza Hut again? I guess we are. I guess that's just who we are on Christmas Eve now for the rest of time. But the reason, the reason that kids do that, the reason that they love that is they love that, that something. Even as their lives are changing and as everything's moving, you know what stays the same? We go to Pizza Hut on Christmas Eve. You know what stays the same? The Christmas bacon, that tradition, whatever it might be. And that gives them something to hold on to. And that's true not just for kids, it's true for us as well. One of the wonderful things about traditions and rituals is they give us a constant in this ever-changing, ever-evolving world that we live in. It gives us something to hold on to, something to celebrate, something that's the same and that grounds us. Now, my friends, I'm not telling you that your rituals and traditions are never going to change, right? The world moves, sometimes we have to change things. When I was growing up, me, my brother, my sister had a tradition that every Christmas Eve, we got in our pajamas and we all crowded into one bed on Christmas Eve for Christmas morning. We got to a point in our lives where that wasn't really possible anymore, right? When I got married, Heather said no, right? Probably a little before that, but sometimes there's rituals and things that we have to change. 
right? Sometimes the world does change. Sometimes we have to move. We have to create new traditions and new rituals. But what they remind us of at their heart is the constancy. And when we talk about what we do as people of faith, the rituals we have as a church, the rituals that are celebrated in Scripture here, whether it be the purification, the waiting, the praising God each and every day, all of it comes back to reminding us that even in the midst of this changing world, where we watch the news and say, man, the world's not like it was before. You know what doesn't ever change? Is Jesus. What never changes is the birth of our Savior, his death, his sacrifice, his resurrection. None of that ever changes. Even though the world might change around us, even though our traditions and rituals might change us sometimes, they remind us that God's love for us never changes. That Jesus is everlasting and unchanging, and his lordship and his love and his grace and mercy, hope, joy, peace, and love never changes. And that we can hold on to that. That's just like those traditions, that's an anchor in this sea and tumult of life. We can hold on to the unchanging nature of Jesus and not forgetting. So our rituals ground us and remind us of who God is. They remind us of who we are. And they're an opportunity for connection. I was sharing in that small group, we were sharing some of our favorite traditions. And as they were sharing them, there was a couple people in our group that got emotional. And they got emotional because they were sharing traditions that they did with someone they loved who's not here anymore. But they still do that tradition. And maybe you have some of those, right? Maybe you have some of those traditions. And it's a reminder that our traditions connect us to one another, right? They connect us together with people who are here as we decorate, but they also connect us with people that aren't with us anymore. One of the ornaments we hang every year on our tree Heather's uncle, Chris, was a big part of our family. He's no longer with us. And Chris wore a pair of red Converse sneakers every day of his life, right? Anywhere he went. He didn't have dress shoes, didn't have flip-flops or anything. It was red Converse sneakers. And we have an ornament we hang on our tree every year. And it's a pair of red Converse sneakers. I don't know who ever made this ornament. I don't know why it exists, but it does. But when we hang that, we remember that connection. It's a moment every Christmas to decorate where we remember Uncle Chris, right? And that's the thing about rituals. They connect us to one another. They connect us to who has come before, loved ones that maybe aren't here with us today, but we remember in the midst of those rituals, in the midst of those traditions, they connect us to one another. They connect us to what has come before. And most importantly, they connect us to God. That in these rituals, in these moments, we connect with God. We feel God in our hearts and our souls. We experience it in a different and a profound way. And that's why we sing our songs that we sing every year. That's why we celebrate with the same nativity sets every year. That's why we worship in this way, because it's a moment for connection. Our story today, why do we take Jesus to the temple because it's a moment again to connect, to connect with the people, with Simeon, with Anna, to connect with God. And my friends, as we come into the season, it's a time of connection. As we celebrate with one another, as we celebrate those who have gone on to glory already and can't be with us, and as we connect to our Savior, the baby born in a manger, we celebrate those rituals. And so my friends, as we go through this season, I ask God's blessing upon you and your families, your rituals, your traditions, no matter how weird they might be, I pray that they bring you joy, hope, love, and peace. My friends, if you don't have rituals in your journey that help to remind you of what Jesus is doing, you can always start new ones. You can always start journeys. So my friends, as we make these rituals in our lives, rituals that remind us of who we are, rituals that connect us with one another and God, rituals that remind us of who God is, I pray that this is a season of traditions, of rituals, and of hope in your life 
as we again celebrate that Jesus is coming. My brothers and sisters, would you bow your heads? Would you pray with me? Gracious Lord, we thank you for the opportunities that we get to worship you, to be together, to celebrate what you are doing, Lord, in this church, in this community. Lord, we thank you. We ask your blessing to be with us each and every day, and especially in this season. We pray all of this in your holy name. Amen. Just ending? Okay. I'm supposed to play us out. So my brothers and sisters, as we prepare to go, as we prepare to go forth today, I want to encourage you as we come in these traditions, as we look to see what we can do, search your own hearts for how you can serve the Lord, whether that's through gifts that we bring, whether that's through things that we share. We've mentioned our new audiovisual that we're trying to push towards. Next week on the 10th, we are going to have the audio company here doing a demonstration of that new system on Sunday morning. So if you want to hear what that sounds like, okay, we're still going to have worship here, same time, same place. If you want to get up a little early and come at the beginning of the 845 service, they're going to play the old system and the new system. You can hear what it sounds like. And I give you full license to come at the beginning to get up and to walk out and to come down here, okay? They're also going to do it at the 11 o'clock service. So if you'd like to stay and for the beginning of the 11, that's fine too. We want to give you an opportunity, but we want to be able to have this service and be able to worship together down here. So that is an opportunity we're going to have, and we encourage you to step forward in faith as you are able. One of the great things that we celebrate in this church is people who have stepped forward in faith and how that has come to pass and what that's done. On Friday night, we celebrated our daycare's Christmas program. And my son stood up there like this the whole time. At least he didn't run off screaming, so we're, we're, we're progressing. But we had 325 people in that sanctuary to watch those kids. I told the trustees we were in fire code, but it was close. 325 people. Because 10 years ago, some people stepped out in faith and stepped out to make a difference. And that continues to make a difference in the lives of our community. And as we step out in faith in all of the different ways in this season and what we do in small ways, in big ways, it changes our world and our community. And this church is changing lives. And that's because of what you do. And I just want to thank you for that and your continued faith. And I just ask God's blessing to be with you. So I hope today filled you with hope. I hope hanging those ornaments, I hope coming together, and I hope celebrating. But as you go forth, my friends, as you go forth, may God's blessing go with you. May the grace of God be upon you. And my friends, with the church of Jesus Christ, say amen. 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 My friends, be blessed. Go forth. Happy start of Advent. And let us come together on the journey to continue next week. May God's blessing go with you. Amen.